This is Matt from Play Unplugged, continuing our coverage of Origins 2013, and I am here with Rod Edwards and Randy Miller, and we're going to talk a little bit about Shroud of the Ancients. So guys, thanks very much for taking the time to talk with us today. Um, Randy, why don't you tell me a little bit about the company and a little bit about the game? Uh, Shroud of the Ancients is really a, a, our biggest, uh, our premier product for the Dark Tavern Press company. Rod and I started Dark Tavern Press probably about uh, six years ago. We really started working together when it came time for us to kind of say, we've been messing around with home campaign systems long enough. This is something we really want to do. Do we want to take it to the next level? Do we want to start working together? Uh, how do we really want to make this happen? And we decided together that you know we really wanted to see what we could do and how we could make this become a reality for us. And this being one of our biggest dreams. Excellent. So you guys started how many years ago? About six. Six, six years. Six, six, seven. Six, seven. And what did you start with? Did you start with this game with Shroud? We started with the campaign setting first. Really, uh, primarily, I'm, I was the dungeon master for our group, and we really just looked at different settings and different fields, and uh, we had tried to do, you know, obviously the pre-made settings and trying to keep up with supplements and things like that. Really, just became a big pain, and so when it comes time to being creative, that's really something I like to kind of take into my own right, and we really wanted to focus on how could we uh, expound upon what we were doing at home, how could we make it our own. How could, we, how could we really truly develop things out, maps, and really make things happen and more solidify? So, yeah. Yeah. so tell me a little bit about the world. Tell me about the setting, the Shroud. Okay. Uh, well, Shroud of the Ancients basically is, uh, for lack of better words, a, a post-apocalyptic fantasy setting. Uh, the, uh, the gods fought in an epic war. Uh, the second moon shattered, and the the uh, one of the gods, the goddess of magic, decided to go ahead and save uh, at least a handful of these people. And so now uh, the world on the outside is terrible and horrific and, and deadly and, and untamed now after 200 years of that time passing. And the people on the inside are starting to suffer as well. There's While there's hope because sunlight is starting to peer back in through the, through the sanctuary, but uh, now there's overcrowding, lack of food, and the shield is beginning to buckle. So. The, the tensions are building up. Uh, you have a lot of uh, factions, including the churches, different sects of different churches, and the, um, the uh, what's called the monger houses, the merchant houses, have a lot of political power and financial power now. And uh, so there's a lot of conflict there, a lot of behind the scenes treachery and things like that. And a lot of people eager to get to the outside and, and find out what's going on out there and maybe either make money or find a new home or spread the word of their God, that kind of thing. So a, a lot of fun to be had. All those elements, all that intrigue, all those various subplots come out in the adventures. They're, they're part and parcel to the world. It sounds like. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the the, the world itself. I mean, we we set the we set the uh, the tone, I guess, if it were, for all of the the different monger houses. At least the most the bigger ones. I mean, as future things come out, we release some more stuff. When we may talk about some of the small ones, but all the big ones that have the most influence. Um, the churches and the individual sects of those churches that have the most influence so that um, because this is what most people would be aware of in, inside the, the sanctuary so yes there's a lot of political intrigue a lot of uh, religious conflict because even even though you have the same god they may be following you have different sects that have different opinions on how that should be handled and so yeah a lot of conflict there a lot of internal storylines to be on to, to go on there a lot of fun for that but yeah and uh, what we wanted to do was really just give you an introduction to the setting overall not to try to bog you down. We didn't want to give a 400-page book and say to the player, hey, even though you paid $60 for this book, don't read the last 300 pages because <laughs> they don't belong to you. So what we put in the Adventurer's Guide to Terra was everything you need to know to play, the rule sets, everything along those lines. Plus we put in what the general populace knows about what's happening. And so they could be a lot. It could be something that there's something deeper to it. And that's something we're going to uh, reserve to release in the Shroud Master's Guide, so that way they know the truth. But as a player, you only have to make the one investment, you've got everything you need, you know, and, and that's what we wanted to set up. Right, exactly. And you guys are coming off a successful Kickstarter, is that correct? Absolutely. Totally, yeah. When was that run? Uh, that ended, wow, when was that? Ended, right at the beginning of the year, right? Yeah, yeah. it ended right around January. January. We started around October of last year, okay. uh, and yeah, we, we, we were pretty successful there. We got a lot of international backers, a lot of local backers. Actually, uh, one of our backers was here at Origins, and uh, he purchased several more copies after running some demos, so uh, he was pretty happy with it overall. Yeah. 
So let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of the game. Um, what's different, unique, compared to uh, any other role-playing game someone's played? I'll let you take that one. Well, <laughs> well, you did most of the work on that part, so go for it. <laughs> well, one of the biggest things we wanted to do is, is we wanted to take a game and approach it from a player standpoint. What really is the focus of a player? And so character development was really important to us. And so we took away the caveat of wanting to have a class. We took away the caveat of wanting to have levels. Because we can't measure ourselves in levels. We can't quantify our abilities in a singular class. So we have a really a skill versus skill based system where you as an individual character can come in and choose the skill sets that you want, really build your character from the ground up, and really create a character that you'd be truly happy to play and really excited to see develop. And that was our focus. Uh, so we pared down the, the attribute scenarios. We only have five of them. We have your agility, uh, your might, your essence, your intellect, and your presence. And if you think about a wheel, the essence of a character is the, the hub of that wheel. And each individual attribute is, is a, a spoke and combined together, which is another thing we had challenges with in the past of how systems seem to quantify attributes. So you always had that throwaway stat, oh, I'll just dump my lowest score in charisma, or <laughs> dump it in this, or dump it in that. And we really wanted to say, well, every aspect of a person affects another aspect of it. So we use the attribute to create those aspects to help define to the character that, that everything is, is linked. So your mind, your essence, your agility comes together to form the little pie piece that makes your stamina. Your agility and your intellect and your essence come together to form your awareness. So, so, yeah. yeah, so really it's not about you know one particular skill covering the scope of one thing and you having to worry, oh my goodness, I'm not going to be any good in this area because I don't have enough points to put in this skill. So really that was our focus and, so, and that's what we did. And we think we did a pretty good job of it. Everybody here at Origins has had a great time. Our playtesters at home have had a great time with it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it really, and that's our primary focus, is to see the players enjoy themselves. Right, and, uh, and one thing that, uh, that you didn't mention, but I, it's a real core part of our game, um, our system is called the D5 RPG system. And we use uh, five-sided dice for all the mechanics in the game. Very unique. Uh, I mean, we looked around. No one else is. Real. Actually, there's one system that's playing around with it. Yeah, the D5 is truly cool, and uh, it's developed by Louis Zaki, famous dice designer and, and game designer. So um, and the guy knows his stuff, and, and again, it's been tested, and it works great, and we love it. So, and people love it. They, they the first thing they say is, "I've never seen this die before," and I said, "Well, I, I have them. You know, <laughs> let's talk." Excellent. So, uh, what's next? What's on the horizon in terms of? New product launches, uh, adventures. Well, we we've got a number of adventures that we want to release, okay. so people will to see a little bit about the world and the setting. So we'll probably we'll be releasing our first adventure after we finish it up for the uh, for our Kickstarter backers. That's called Duet in Denway, and it's a murder mystery. And we really we focus a lot more on the role playing than rolling the dice and playing. And, and, and part of our first release for D5 was we wanted to show an emphasis on that. We wanted to show people, you know, you can play a game where you may not have to roll or have any combat at all, but still have a thoroughly good time. Now there is the possibility for an immense amount of combat <laughs> in a murder mystery when you've got several people that are suspects and, and one person or one group of adventurers accusing or investigating everybody who's there. So there's certainly different dynamics there. But we wanted to create something. Also, one of the key elements of that murder mission is I wrote it in a way where the actual murderer could be changed. So the Shroud Master can decide who the murderer is. The player characters may come to the conclusion that um, this is the murderer and they may feel like they have all the evidence they need mm -hmm. because there are a number of red herrings in the, uh, in the thing. And you'll get that joke a little more when you actually buy, buy the adventure <laughs> and read it up. That's how we and use red herring quite a bit. That's it, uh, yeah. Uh, well, and also we'll be uh, developing a, a mini adventure that we're going to put online. Okay. That's going to be something that's going to put a little bit of fast play information so people can get a feel for how the mechanics work. And also, you know, put that out there for free so that not only gamers that have bought the book and, uh, and are interested in playing or maybe get, get the PDF at some point, they, they'll have some kind of mechanical template so that they can see how things function, how how uh, how combat occurs, and what kind of combat and, and encounters they can put in their games. Um, but but we want to get something out there, obviously, because this is it's our first step. But we want to make sure we're reaching out to people that maybe have never heard of us. You know? Right. And long-term goal, of 
course, is the Shroud Master Sky. And we're looking at doing something probably around the March or April time frame of 2014 for the Shroud Master Sky. This is our premier edition release of Adventurer's Guide to Terrace. So, you know, we're going to see how this goes, see what the feedback is, see if there's any concerns that we've missed or our play testers have missed. We'll go back to the board and, and as our artist says, you never truly finish working on something, you just run out of time. <laughs> and, and as the more you look and look and look, you say, man, we could have done this, we should have done this. But at the end of the day, our focus was to create a quality product that gamers would enjoy and we think we've been successful in doing that. Very yeah, much. Totally. So. Do you guys think you will kickstart the Shroud Keeper's Guide? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. De definitely do the Kickstarter for the Trial Masters Guide. Masters, my yeah, apologies. No worries. Absolutely. We, yeah, we think we'll do a, a Kickstarter for Trial Masters Guide. You know, so to, we, yeah, to me, it's a it's a no brainer. I mean, you already have we already have support from the previous Kickstarter, so we can always appeal to those folks to hey, here's the next book that we're working on, uh, and now we have that success behind us, so we feel good about that, and we can we can build on that success and, and, and go to the next level. Great. Well, we look forward to seeing it. You said spring of next year. Yes, sir. Yep, is the plan? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Well, guys, thanks very much for taking the time to talk with me today. Uh -huh. And we'll look forward to seeing more great things. Thanks. It was, Thank it was our pleasure. Thank you.